just a word on on Ireland's role. Uh, I think Ireland has punched above its weight for uh, quite some time, uh, and the IIEA has been part of that, uh, as well as as parliamentary scrutiny on a number of issues that are quite important in Bosnia. <laughs> Frankly, I don't think Rakom Mladic would have been arrested without, without your parliamentarians actually giving scrutiny to the issue of whether Serbia should get a uh, stabilization association agreement and candidacy while he was still at liberty. Um, uh, that was not the only factor. The, 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 the stance of the prosecutor, Serge Bramertz, in his, fi- in his report, the last one preceding Mladic's arrest, was, was, was a key factor, as well as the Dutch parliament saying no pasaran. But the fact that Ireland was giving it scrutiny and looked like it might align with the Netherlands' position, uh, I think, was the final drop in the political calculus that, that President Tadic made to find Mladic uh, um, so that he could facilitate further European enlargement for his country. Um, so Ireland, even through the construct of the EU, even when it doesn't have the presidency, can carry a lot of weight if it's willing to do so, as can other members. Um, one, one point that I'd like to maybe re, recast that Marianne had said earlier, uh, the Dayton construct and the Dayton incentives uh, are, yes, the international community midwife them, uh, and particularly the United States, but they were designed around the imperatives of the, of the people who needed to sign the agreement. So they built a system around themselves. So it's not at all uh, surprising that they, they have a system that works for them. Uh, the problem is, and this is where the EU is having a diff- uh, really conceptually difficult time understanding its own predicament, is there's nothing that the EU can offer the established political elites in Bosnia and Herzegovina that's better than they all, what they already got. You could keep what you stole, keep stealing, remain unaccountable both politically and legally, and there's nothing that trumps that. Uh, so I think that you, one gets the impression on the ground that the European Union delegation and, and the institutions in Brussels, the Commission in particular, but also, also uh, High Representative Ashton, um, they're, they're trying to prove the EU's transformative power to themselves, and Bosnia is just a stage for that rather than actually navigating by the ground reality and, and the effect of their policies on the ground. So in essence, they've, 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 they, they still approach this the way transfer, uh, uh, EU enlargement has worked in past waves, where the partnership is between the, the established political elite and the EU. Now the assumption is that that political elite is democratically accountable. In Bosnia, that's not true. Effectively, it's an electoral oligarchy that we all pretend is a democracy but it doesn't operate to democratic imperatives, and that is the essence of the problem that we're dealing with here. The role of external actors in that, the the best value added we have is to take fear out of the equation. It's re-entered the the political bloodstream since 2006, largely because of a retreat in international posture. This assumption that soft power, uh, the pull of Brussels could, could... could compensate for a, a reduction in the push of Dayton was proven wrong by the end of 2006, but we're still operating according to that flight plan, and we're on bureaucratic autopilot because there's very little political attention in the most important member states and the other members of the Peace Implementation Council to this issue. And when there is is attention, it's episodic and not very deep. Um, I think the, the one thing that could help change the political dynamic more than anything else is a very clear statement in getting us out of the dead zone that we're in now, which is, so long as Dayton remains the constitutional order, and nobody, as, as Marianne and, and Tia said and alluded as well, uh, there's no appetite to even go beyond Sadich Finci. Right now we're talking about credible effort toward meeting the Sadich Finci ruling, which is pathetic. I mean, that just shows complete lack of... Uh, <coughs> desperation, actually, is the word I would use desperation on the part of the international community for anything they could call progress so they could tick their boxes on their checklists because if things aren't moving forward they're failing too and that's and i think that would explain a lot i think bureaucratic imperatives are part a critical decoder ring for figuring out why the policy is what it is um the taking that fear out of the equation would be would be essential 
and that's the dead zone we're in is that nobody's even has the appetite to talk about changing Dayton, but we're removing the Dayton enforcement instruments. So it should be logical that until Dayton is changed consensually, there shouldn't be anything imposed, and nobody's even talking about that. Even if it were feasible, which it's not, it wouldn't be desirable because whatever, whatever is going to work is going to have to be organic and accepted by each self-defined <coughs> group of citizens, uh, of which there are more than three. Uh, there, uh, if, uh, we're, we're, we're in this, this gap. Uh, so everything is allowed now. There are no rules, effectively. Not because legally there are no rules, but we're not enforcing them anymore because <laughs> we don't want to. And so what you end up with is every lack of progress, everything is, is to be blamed on the, on, the, on the Bosnians. And this is what you hear in Sarajevo and Brussels all the time. Well, it's up to the Bosnians to do this. Okay, yeah, which ones? Mm -hmm. And the EU's constituency for a functioning state is not the established elites that already have a system that works for them but to be found at the popular level, at which I think that that could, that, could be, that could coalesce. But right now, what makes it very difficult is the fact that everybody's worst nightmare is at least conceivably possible under current conditions, whereas up until 2006, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Didn't mean that you get what you want, but all the unfulfilled agendas that war was, <laughs> war was fought over were on ice until we decided we didn't need hard power tools anymore. Uh, and that just creates... Those were the guardrails. They don't need to be the driver for progress, but they need to be the, the, the safety net be, or, or the threshold beyond which people, the foundation beyond which people can't fall. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. I think that, that, that sums up sort of my view. The, 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 the neighbors have a role, but I think there's an overestimation of how much their forward movement will impel forward movement in Bosnia, considering the political imperatives that the, the political actors work on there. So thanks, I look forward to the, our discussion.